Hello everyone. I am back. It's been about 75 months. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's been a long time. I think I can't even remember when I posted my last video and for that I apologize but here we are. This video is just kind of catching up and how my second semester went. Your girl passed all of her classes. I got four A's and one B. Med search though. Med search one almost took me out. I was so stressed out, y'all. I thought I was having a heart attack. For real, for real. I ended up going to urgent care. I like literally couldn't breathe. It was just too much. Too much. But we succeeded. So this semester I took nutrition. I took nutrition, two theology classes, med search one, and mental health. I love mental health, but I'm gonna get into that in a second. Okay, so first, nutrition. Always love nutrition. It's always interesting for me to look back and be like, this is what I should be eating. This is clearly what I'm not eating enough of. All the things, right? So that was fun. My instructor, I had her last semester for my first semester for like nursing. I can't even remember the class, what it was called, but I had her and she was really good for that class too. Um, my theology classes, so I don't know if you know, I go to a private Catholic school. So a lot of Franciscan values, a lot of just also incorporating like religion into care. Not a bunch, but a lot of times we have to write like, oh, moral issues, like how would you handle this? Or what do you think about this um, case studies? But I'm happy to be done with that because I think my concept of, of like, sacrificing one for the greater good is like different from some people's I don't know not saying that I'm a terrible person I might be but sometimes I'm like well that doesn't make sense why y'all did that but okay all right so then mental health mental health I loved mental health so I go to school in the Nashville area so we were at Vanderbilt they have a really really awesome like mental health psych facility um so got to experience that it was a different type of nursing for me because all the nurses sat behind the desk so they have like a big desk and all the nurses kind of sit behind it because all the patients will I won't say excuse me all of them but the majority of the patients are in the milieu so they're in like a sun room if you will with tvs and stuff so they watch them there so it's very different from what I had seen in the hospital with like fundamentals and like med surge those nurses were literally going constantly and so it was a different type of nursing and so for me as much as I like mental health I don't know if I would start off doing that because the skills that I'm learning now I want to make sure that I get those down like being able to start um medicines in a pump or anything like that, like starting IVs, they don't do that on the, like in the psych units. Because I mean, when you think about it, like you are, you are exposed to things where you are like drawing blood from people. So it's probably not the best to be <laughs> around that or have that on that facility. So that was pretty eye opening for me. It was very, very different. But for me being a veteran, for me also, I mean, I, I don't know, what is a veteran? but still in like, so I served on active duty in the Navy and then now I'm in the reserves for the army. So mental health is really near and dear to my heart. Um, because sometimes you see stuff in the military that you don't necessarily agree with or it doesn't align with you. And then, you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a battle I would say for some people. And then you come home when you're deployed, it's like your life is on pause, but everybody around you, like their life is still going. It's a hard concept to, to really like explain to people or for people to understand, I feel like because you, I feel like you just have to experience it if that makes sense. Um, so that was, that's pretty interesting because I, when I joined the Navy, on active duty, I didn't hear about behavioral health specialists or anything like that. But in the army, I did like, that's the job. You could be a behavioral health specialist, all these other things. And so I think the culture, the military always kind of, adapt to like the culture outside of the military too right so I think as more people are pushing mental health mental health mental health on the outside 
the the army or the military in general is just like okay maybe mental health is something that we should be focused on in a small population that also suffers from a lot of mental health issues you know um i think they say like every 22 seconds a veteran deletes themselves i don't know how to say it on youtube um but that's really sad and i think a lot of times it's just because you can't cope or you know it's hard to see that your life is on pause and other people are still going not to be a Debbie Downer, I'm sorry, they got real dark for a second, but so I was like, man, that's super cool, but it doesn't really align with my ultimate goal in the long run, which is to become a flight nurse. Um, so I was like, I don't know if that's for me, but my classmates, well, the people that were in my clinical, they were like, my teacher went around and was like, hey, who's interested in mental health? And they were literally like, she probably has the best. <laughs> like relationship with the people here because and it was nice for me to see that everybody struggles right there are people who had like made millions of dollars there were people who were homeless there were people who were just living their lives and then one day they were like oh I've been diagnosed with bipolar and I think it's hard for people if you don't understand or you're not around to that or exposed to that it, it can be very taxing on you as a partner as a family member as a whatever and so yeah, it was just, it was very eye-opening and humbling for me personally. Um, so yeah, I liked, men, I liked mental health a lot. Um, and I really liked my professor for that. She was very informative and she was a black woman. And I have never seen like, even in the unit, I had not seen like one black nurse in mental health. And I don't know if it's just the stigma for our culture that like, we not doing that. I don't know. I don't know. But if you need therapy or you think about, you know, you want to go to therapy, give it a shot. It might work for you. I'm not saying go check yourself into like a mental health facility, but therapy might be beneficial. I think it's nice to be able to talk to someone who is unbiased. I talked to a psychiatrist when I first got out, um, when I got off of active duty, because it was a hard adjustment for me to like assimilate into the real world. I was older, so going back to college and all the kids, I say kids, but you know, all the other students were being, they were 18, 19, 20, 21, whatever the case may be. And I was like almost 30. I was like, oh, like how do I assimilate to this? So I absolutely encourage that. But onto the nitty gritty, med surge, med surge, med surge. So adult critical care, right? <sighs> when I tell y'all so everybody had told us like mid surge oh my gosh and the professor oh my gosh and you know I usually like to seek things out for myself because your experience might be completely different from my experience and that's what ended up happening for me so I had got a tip from someone who had graduated from the program prior I was shadowing her one day and she was like yeah I graduated from that school she was like I just graduated in May she was very knowledgeable and so I said, yeah, we're going into um, med surge with this professor. And she said, make sure you form a relationship with that professor day one. Um, She's like, no matter what, because she does not round. So people in my class who got a 76.45, and if you were in nursing, you know that a 76.45 is, uh, is a 77 or a 76.5, right? Uh, so they did not pass. They failed because the passing score is a 77 for my program. 76.45, y'all. She was failing people. And so I reached out to her after my first exam. I think my first exam, I got a 74. And she was like, oh, that's pretty good for the first exam. You know, most people, blah, 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 blah because you're trying to you're trying to retain information, but you're also trying to figure out like, how is this professor going to ask? So you don't know necessarily what to study, what not to study, if you have the right information. And so, yeah, she gave a study guide, but it wasn't like a all inclusive. And people tell you all the time, like, don't read the entire book. There's no way that you can read the entire nursing book. And her philosophy was read the the like headings in each chapter because they're going to give you information about things and then if you don't understand that content after listening to the lecture and reading that then dive into the book on that section and get a thorough understanding so i didn't realize that until like 
after the first test. So I got a 74 on the first test. I got an 88 on the second test. And so what I like to do is I like to, whatever we're learning, my patient in the hospital, I want to find someone who is also having that issue, right? Because one, for me, it's easier for me to recall if it's something that's tangible as far as like, oh, patient X had pyelonephritis. Um, also BPH also had chronic heart failure. So obviously, you know, you want to give him fluids, but then you can't give him fluids because he's got chronic heart failure, blah, blah, so on and so forth. So that to me, it makes it all make sense and it comes back full circle for me. So that's what I like to do. Um, my third test, y'all, let me sip my water first. Baby, them ABGs. Every time I study ABGs, I'm like, yeah, I get it. I got it. The numbers, yes, understandable. But when they're partially and fully compensated, I'm like, ooh, wait a minute. I just now am really fully, truly understanding that. Now, after like three tests, I had one in patho, two, because our final exam was cumulative. So our third exam and then our final exam and I got a 70. And so my teacher was like, maybe you were sick. Maybe you didn't feel well. And I was like, no, I just freaked myself out so badly that I just got into my own head. And then I didn't even miss ABG questions or COP because it was like COPD, ABG. I can't remember what else was on that exam. But she was like, you didn't miss anything for respiratory. She was like, and you missed one question on ABG. So whatever the other content was, and I think it was because I didn't really even, I studied it. Let me not use air quotes. I studied it, but I didn't study as hard as I should have in that section because it was like, oh, it's going to be 40% respiratory. It's going to be 30% ABGs and then 20, Lord Jesus, 30% or whatever number makes 100. I'm yeah don't mind me y'all it's been a long day so that was kind of like i focused really hard on those things and i should have spent more time on that because i probably would have done better so my grade in that class dropped from an 83 to a 79.2 so i was like oh my gosh and so you know when you're that close i don't know for me when i'm that close to like failing i am like oh my gosh so then we have one more exam that exam before our final that exam was over like breast cancer, um, prostate cancers, like a lot of that type of situation, medications and things of that nature. So I made sure I hit that really, really hard. And then I got stupid questions wrong. So like not stupid questions, but questions that I shouldn't have gotten wrong, I got wrong because I was overthinking. So one was about a medication. And I was like, I knew the answer. And so, you know, when you get up at the test and you're like, that's not the right answer. That's exactly what I was. So I got an 80 on that exam. So I got a 74, a 88, a 70, and 80. So I went into my final with a 79.6. I met with my instructor again because I met with her after every single test. I was like, what is going on? Let me know what I missed. But not only because I wanted to get a good grade in the class, but I want to know what concepts that I don't understand because I'm sure that I'm going to see them on the NCLEX. They're not going to be any easier. So I was like, let me know what concepts I missed. So that way I can go back and try and either A, understand why I didn't understand it or B, ask for help if I don't get it. Um, and so study my butt off. I mean, when I tell y'all I study, so usually what I do, I can't even lie, mental health, I was studying like three days before, I won't say three days, like four or five days before the exam because it made sense to me because I was seeing it and I feel like a lot of the symptoms, the manifestations, if you will, present the same for like people who have bipolar, people who are schizophrenic, people who have depression, like a lot of their manifest manifestations are similar, but you have to tailor it to the individual, like the treatment, right? So that I was like, okay, it makes sense. And then I literally would like read the book for that because I was interested in it. Not that I wasn't interested in med surge because ultimately... I have to be interested in it, right? So then um, for my final for mental, not mental health, my final for med search, I think I studied like 10 days out 
10 to 14 days out, I studied like really, really, really like every single day. I studied for it, studied for it. And I'm not the type of person like once my brain is like no more, I take a break. So if that is four hours, if it's an hour, like 20 minutes, like when my brain is like, no, ma'am, you're done because you're not retaining. I will do something that's relaxed. I'm like, okay, let me watch a let me watch a movie. Let me watch an episode of this just to kind of decompress and get my mind off of that and shift my focus on something else to give myself like a brain break, right? You cannot retain, like people were studying like, oh, I'm gonna study for eight hours. I'm gonna study for nine hours straight. And I'm like, if that works for you, that works for you. But I don't think scientifically that it is good for you. They've done studies, you need a break. <laughs> But if it works for you, it works for you. For me, it does not. I like to do like smaller portions. So I'll study for like 45 minutes and then take a 15 minute break. 45 minutes, 15 minute break. And then every now and then I'm like, I'm taking a two hour break and then I'll get back to it. Um, I want to run to Target. I'm going to run a Sephora, <laughs> anything like that. Um, and so study really hard for that. was so stressed out. Email my professor because we took our exam on Monday. Email her. I was like, I am so anxious. I literally cannot like, can you please give me my grade or just tell me if I passed or failed because we take our exams electronically. So it's like they do. a What's the word I'm looking for? They do something where they check to make sure that like all, like one question everybody didn't miss because of wording or because the options were like trash or anything like that. So she did the analysis. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm like, what's the word? What's the word? So they do an analysis, but I'm like, girl, you know my score roughly. Um, and she sent out a message to us and was like, hi, everyone. Please be patient. Your exam will be posted on Thursday. And I was like, what? So I was so stressed out because I was like, literally, I had a 79. I'm like, I'm on the cousin neighbor. I was like, you're going to pass. You're going to pass. You're going to pass. But it was like, literally, no one in the class was safe. Even if you had like a 80 something, you could still potentially fail the class if you did terrible on the um on the final so it was just like Ooh, but I felt good about the final and I'm usually like ah, I can usually like ballpark my score I'm like I think I gotta be I think I gotta I think I gotta be I think I mm, that was not so great um and I was like I feel okay about it but I don't feel great I'd feel even much better if she just said you passed she did not. So then we took our mental health final on Thursday. And literally, when I got out of my mental health final, people were like, she just emailed me and told me I didn't pass the class. And I was like, what? And it was literally just people who were very close who were like, hey, I got a 70. You got a 76.2. You got a 76.45. Um, you didn't pass. And so there is an appeal process, obviously. And I think some people were appealing and some people were like, I was not even close. So I'm not um, going to appeal or anything like that. Um, which is sad because it's like, you know, my cohort was like the smallest they had ever seen. Summers are usually small, but they were like, this is the smallest we had ever seen. It was 33 of us and of the 33, I think like eight people the first semester had like dwindled. It had dwindled down. Um and then we came into with like the new cohort of people that hadn't passed. And then from that, we dwindled down again. And it's just like, you know, you start off this process where it's just so much anxiety. It's hard to explain to people. It's like, if you don't go through it, you know, it's hard to explain because in nursing school, every answer could relate to this question, but it's whether or not like, so one question, it was like, the person has knee pain, what would you do? And it was like a select all that apply. And I'm like, <laughs> and my teacher asked me, she's like, you know this. And I put, I said, put STDs on. I'm like, that don't even make sense. Cause why would you have that on if you're in pain? Like that doesn't decrease pain. It's supposed to be to prevent, you know, like DVTs or blood clots or anything like that. But I'm like, it has nothing to do with pain. But yes, you would give a person who had knee surgery, you would give them SEDs, but not for pain. So it's like very specific. It's like if you're not reading, because my brain is like, yes, knee surgery. And I'm like, that's not what they asked. So I had to slow down. I had to learn to slow down, read the question. And like, what is the question? 
really asking you about? Is it asking you about knee surgery as a whole or is it asking you about pain from a knee surgery? What are you going to give that patient? So little things like that. Um, so the next semester I'm going into PEDS, OB, MedSearch 2, and then like a research class. Um, Y'all. <laughs> And I'm just ready to be done because I'm like, I'm halfway there. I'm so excited. I've got a good GPA. I looked into like a master's program, which I am not getting into a master's program anytime soon. Let me just go be a nurse for a little while and see if I like y'all <laughs> or not. If I just want to date y'all or if I want to marry y'all. Because, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. But I'm definitely not going to go to a master's program probably for another like three or four years because I want to get, you know, time and experience under my belt. I've heard from nurses like that is not the best plan to just go straight out of school and right into your master's program because you, A, don't know if you would like it, but B, a lot of the things that you learn, you're going to learn once you pass your NCLEX and once you're up under like another nurse, like get under my wing and come and learn because... Uh, there's a difference, I guess, between like textbook and real life. Um, and how you feel about that, I don't know, but that's what they say. I don't know. Obviously, I just know textbook. So that's what's going on. I'm going to try. I'm not going to say try. I'm going to be more consistent. I even bought me some lights to make myself a little bit more, you know, fancy. But um, yeah, that's pretty much that. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, Please let me know if you're in med surge or if you know some tips or tricks. Um, I know that I got simple nursing. Um, I think I bought the year for 200 and something dollars. It's worth it. He has like little, I'm going to say corny, but I don't mean it in a bad way, but corny little songs and sayings that help me memorize things or help me to recall things um mrs woodruff i believe is how you say her name i believe she teaches in texas she posts her um lectures on youtube they people from my class were like this is how i pass you know med search final and then somebody said level up rn I don't know. Nurse Sam, I've heard about her, but I haven't looked into her. Nurse in the making. I bought the nursing school bundle. Um, I bought her flashcards as well. And I'm going to be honest, I didn't use her flashcards as much. I might use them this semester because they are med surge, but I didn't use them as much. But the nursing school bundle, I definitely have gotten um, good use out of. And I guess it just depends on how you learn. Me, I can like read something and then like recite it to myself and I learn that way. Flashcards. I'm not very good at flashcards. I don't know why my brain just doesn't. We just don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I could if I really focus, but flashcards to me are just, I don't know. They just don't work well for me, which is fine. And so I bought them anyway, though, because I had heard good things. And so I think this semester, I'm probably going to need to use them. Um, but yeah. So that's all. Like I said, comments, questions, concerns. If you're in nursing school or you're about to start nursing school, tell me what supplies or things that you are looking forward to. Tell me what you're not looking forward to. Um, anything that, anything, sorry. Anything that has helped you. I promise y'all I'm smart. My brain is just on autopilot. We were outside and it was like 19 degrees outside. So I think we are trying to come back to life. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see y'all next time. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be more consistent, okay? I'm going to show y'all like a week, a week in the life, I guess. I don't know. I think I'm going to try and do weekly vlogs starting the beginning of the year because I'm about to go plant-based, um, about to get back in the workout game, probably about to quit one of these jobs. Yeah one or two of these jobs <laughs> um and yeah we're gonna go from there and i hope y'all had a great holiday and happy new year to you all